Morning. What's wrong? I'm afraid we're going to have to wait a little while longer for our baby. John, I'm so... oh, I really thought we'd done it this time. Never mind. We'll just keep on trying. But for how long? As long as it takes. Look, we can't keep putting ourselves through hell every month trying to conceive. It'll only make matters worse. It'll happen sooner or later. We just have to relax and wait until it does. Aileen, I've just been down the cemetery. Mum's grave being dug up. What's going on? You should know. They've taken her away, and I don't know where. But how can they do that without something like that, without our say-so? Oh, I think they got your say-so when you went down to your mates at the police station. Why don't you go and ask them, eh? And while you're at it, see when I can have me husband back. What, they've arrested Mick? Oh, don't sound so surprised. What did you think was going to happen? Oh, I don't know. I just... Well, you'll be pleased to know we were taken in for questioning. Mick's still there and I've just got back. Oh, they kept hold of him. They must have realised it was him who did it. What we did, we did together. And it was done for me, Mum. And what's more, I don't regret one single bit of it. I hope you realise what you've done. To me, to Mick, to the kids. We might all be separated because of what you've done. And if we are, I am never going to forgive you. Now, just go away. All right, Max. Hello, Ron. Hey, hang on, hang on, I want a word. Uh, all right, Jack. We're running a bit pushed for time. Yeah, look, look, it won't take a minute. Hi, you all right, love? love? Yeah, Look, I you? just want to let you both know that everybody's invited to a get-together at the bar tonight. We're having a little celebration for well, Jack. Well, in actual fact, Susanna, she's a bit... Uh, she's not a bit under the weather. We won't be able to make it. Oh. Yeah, well, if she perks up a bit, feel free to come along. It's going to be a good night. Yeah, thanks for the invite, but uh, I, I doubt it. Bye. Yeah. Charlo. Well done, Max. Bye-bye. I don't suppose you can make it either. Well, it depends on Jimmy. You know, he's working flat out of the chippy at the moment. What's the celebration for? Look, Jack, if I tell you something, promise you won't tell anyone. Yeah, of course. Well, I'm organising tonight so I can make a special announcement. Something very important concerning me and our Jack. What is it? <sighs> I've bought out JC Bradley's share of the bar. I'm our Jackie's new partner. You sure you know what you're letting yourself in for? Yeah, as soon as I thought of it, Jack, I knew I had to go for it. How could you afford it, Ron? Well, I suppose you could say it's a bit of a gamble because I've put everything I've got into it. But I know I've made the right decision, Jack. Oh, Ron, what if something goes wrong? What would you do? You shouldn't be taking such big risks with your future now, you know? Not at your age. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, I don't see it as a big risk. I think going in with our Jack is going to be a shrewd investment. I'm in the big league now, Jack. <laughs> Let's hope so. See ya. Ta da, love. Elaine! Mick, I'm in here. Oh, oh, Mick. Oh, I've been so worried. It's all right, it's all right, oh. I'm Where's the kids? Are they okay? Oh, yes, yeah, Simbad left a note. He's taking them out for the day. So what did they say? Why have you been so long? They didn't ask me any new questions. Just the same ones over and over again. And then they got me out in the end there. Which oh. you need. Oh, I should have had a solicitor. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was saying. It just all kept coming out it's wrong. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, but what if I've ruined it? You know, what if I've made it worse for both of us? Okay, let's try not to worry about that now. Let's go around and see Elena. Find out what's going on, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I thought young lads did the share of the cooking these days. Well, Christian would if I asked him to, but I want to do it myself. I won't be fair expecting him to cook when he just gets in from work. Um, you go to work, don't you? Yeah, I just wish I had more time. I want our flat to be really nice. But instead, I keep on top of the cooking and the washing as well as going to work. Yeah, well, you still get the hang of it, love. Um, yeah, I hope so. Because I'm all over the place at the moment. I just want everything to be right. <laughs> See you, love. Mushy peas on top. 85 change. Cheers, mate. Oh, thank God for that. Listen, Lindsay's had to get off. She's not feeling very well. I'm getting home. Got me interview this afternoon. You'll have to hang on a bit, Jimmy. We've got to go and see her now. I've got to get back and get changed. Look, I'm sorry, Jimmy. But being suspected of murder is a little bit more important than a place on some course. We won't be long, Jimmy. It really is very urgent. All right. So what they say down the neck? Loads of questions. The same ones over and over again. Oh, it was terrible. Listen, did they mention the other business? Yeah, they asked about the heroin, but you weren't mentioned. 
So what did you say, like? Well, I told him that you had bought it off some fella in a pub. I mean, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Thanks. Right then, come on. Thanks for holding the fortune. You yeah, know, don't mention it. Hey, listen. Thanks for keeping me stunned about the smack. I mean, you know, if I do get on this course, the last thing I want is to end up getting arrested. It'll be as quick as we can. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, son. Oh, Michael's not coming now, is he? Um, the chef says you've ordered a big buffet for tonight. Is you okay that with Jackie first? No, but it'll be all right, don't worry. You can't invite people round and not put a spread on, can you? Are you sure about this? I mean, you and Jackie didn't seem too keen on the idea, and it's not as if she's got anything to celebrate at the moment. She will have. You'll see. Anyway, once everyone's in, she's had a few, she'll be made up. until they come back. You're going to be pushing it, you know, if you want to get washed and changed. Oh, listen, I won't have time for that. I'll see you later. Good luck! <sighs> Sorry, love. Thank you. Thanks a lot. OK. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Sorry to have kept you. Please, do come through. Thanks. So, how are you both feeling? <sighs> Shattered. None of this seems real. I'm not surprised after what you've been through. We just want to know what happens next. I mean, do you think the police are going to charge us? Well, let's hope not. There's a good chance that they'll view the case sympathetically. They're quite apprehensive about prosecuting people for this type of crime. But really, before I start speculating, I need to have an idea of what you told the police. Ah, oh, I just told them exactly what happened. Oh. I wish I'd have had a solicitor in there with me. I just didn't know what to do. It's OK. There's no need to worry about that now. If the police do press charges, I don't know how I'm going to cope. What if people start thinking we're murderers? Hey, don't talk like that. I know it's easy for me to say, but if I were you, I'd try not to worry too much about what other people think. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to cope. How am I going to face friends and neighbours if they start thinking that I murdered me, Mum? Elaine. People who know us know we would never harm Gladys. If the police do go ahead with things, would it be better for us if we pleaded guilty to a lesser charge? Hang on, Elaine. I don't think we should plead guilty to anything. We're innocent. I know that, but I'm just being realistic. The way things are, if you are charged, it can only be with one thing, I'm afraid, and that's murder. Where they're doing the interviews for the PGCE course. Thanks. Hi. Listen, your dad came by earlier and invited me along to your gathering tonight, but I'm afraid they won't be able to make it. Oh, don't worry about it. I wish you'd stop all this. The last thing I feel like doing at the moment is having a party. So it's not your idea, then? No way. I think he's just trying to help take my mind off the court case and everything. But it's not going to work. He just doesn't seem to realise that I can't celebrate anything until I know what's going to happen to Leanne. Well, I'm afraid now she's changed her plea, you're going to have to prepare yourself for the judge treating her more leniently. So is that it, then? Don't I get the chance to put my story forward? No. The judge has got your statement, but you won't be called now. It's all wrong. Why should the judge only hear her side of the story? She could end up with a lighter sentence now, couldn't she? 
That's a distinct possibility, yes. But that can't be right. She did what she did. It shouldn't matter what she pleads. She's just as guilty. That's not how it works, though, I'm afraid. Well, it should be. I mean, what about the victim? Don't my feelings count? I should be allowed to have my say. I'm the one who suffered. It's not fair. Mr. Corkill. Yeah. I'm Michael Potter, course director and coordinating tutor. It's a pleased to meet you, Mr. Potter. Well, call me Michael. Uh, hey, Jimmy. Now, don't be worried. This is going to be a very informal interview. All I'm aiming to do is assess whether you're suited to the course and answer any queries you may have. Right. I see from your application you did your degree at Sheffield Uni. Yeah, that's right. Uh, why? You didn't do yours there, did you? No, I'm a Leeds man myself. Great university. Happy times. I did sociology too. Yeah? Fancy that. And what did you specialise in? Um, I did a lot of research into inner city crime. Really? Sounds fascinating. Yeah, it was. Now, I see from your application you have a, a very diverse CV. Yeah, that's right. And since you did your degree, you've travelled extensively. Mm. Well, most people take a year out. I took a decade out. Nearly two. And from your application, you have a wide range of jobs. Yeah. I've done quite a lot. You spent some time working with horses. Yeah. Very satisfied. But there wasn't much of a future in it, you know. Uh, well, I think the odds were against me, looking back on it. <laughs> And you spent some time more recently in pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Very interesting experience. But it wasn't for me. Well, we all live and learn. So now you want to go into teaching? Yeah. I mean, I know I'm coming to it late in life, like, but... Uh, well, it's one of those things I've always wanted to do deep down inside. Well, age isn't a problem. I think far too many people rush into it or simply do it because they can't think of anything else to do. But you don't seem to fall into either of those categories. No? Oh, right. Well, I do feel I've got a lot to offer, you know, with me experience and that, like, things to pass on. I mean, I think teaching can get too set in its ways, can't it? I want to... Well, I want to try and do a few different things. Sounds like you've never heard of the national curriculum, then. Oh, yeah, I have. It's just... Well, I think I'd like to develop a few ideas of my own. Really? Yeah. That's what's all this nice of. Hey, it looks great, doesn't it, eh? I told you I didn't want any fuss. Yeah, I know you did, but I bet you have a great time tonight. Mm -hmm. Look, Dad, I think we need to talk about you helping out in here. Now that I'm back at work, I think yeah, it's time... Yeah, all right, Jack, but can we have a chat later on? See, I want to go home and get changed, cos I've got to be back for when people start arriving. But, Dad... Later on, all right, love. Won't be long, right? Hello, Nick. Hello, stranger. All right, Jack. Look, I'm sorry for dropping you in here. I promise to make the time up. Has someone let you know what's going on? Yeah, and he rang and said you weren't coming in. Something to do with the police. You're a source, isn't it? Well, if there's anything I can do. Thanks, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll get started, eh? Looks like I'm just in time for the party. What's it about? I wish I knew. <sighs> well, you certainly seem to be one of our more unconventional applicants. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? I mean, don't want all teachers to be the same, do you? And I'd be dead boring now, wouldn't it? Well, I suppose you're, you're right, yes. Though we do need to make sure all our applicants have the necessary requirements that will eventually enable them to become teachers. Well, I'm your man, then. I mean, you know, uh, well, I think I can make those kids interested in learning. And I wouldn't be a soft touch, anything like that. I mean, I'd be able to keep them in line, you know. Well, a good teacher needs to know how to bring out the best in his pupils, though discipline is an important issue. Oh, is right. Well... 
think that's all I need to know. Unless you have any questions? No, I think you've explained it all. Well, nothing about the course or the lecture contents? No, not really. I'm sure it'll all be sound. I mean, acceptable. Right. Well, then, thank you very much. I'll uh, see you out. Yeah, no. Thanks. Hi, hi. Keeping an eye on the missus, eh? No, I'm just having a belly, that's all. She's a very valuable asset to this place, you're Rachel. Very good with the customers. Yeah, I haven't noticed. Hey, Katie. Did you hear about the police taking Mick and Elaine away? Yeah, they kept them both in overnight. What did you want with that? Who knows, but I bet it's something to do with that chippy of his. You know, I always thought it was very convenient the way the pizza parlor burnt down. The next thing he's got this flash new place. What? You reckon he had a shot flooded to get the insurance? Well, you can't say it doesn't look suspicious, can you? <laughs> that was superb. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. How are you feeling? Fine. Oh, disappointed. But fine. Yeah. I was, um... Well, I, I was wondering whether to make an appointment to see the doctor. Oh, why? Well, just for some advice, really. You know, on the uh, best way to conceive. Well, I think that sounds a great idea. You should have a full checkup, make sure you're in perfect health. Well, I thought she might be able to give me some dietary tips. You know, advice on relaxation classes and stuff. I, I've heard sometimes it can help. Well, it all sounds great, but I wouldn't want you to get hung up by it all. I won't. I won't. I mean, uh, we've only been trying for a few months, haven't we? I, I realise it could be a while before anything happens. I mean, I'm prepared to be patient. I mean, I've got plenty of time. I mean, look at Jackie Corkill. She's older than well, me. That's it. You and she just had a baby relax. with no problems at all. I mean, let's just let nature take its course. If you're on edge all the time, you could be hampering your chances of conceiving. I know. I won't let it get me down. Hmm. Honestly. I thought everyone would have turned up by now. I know a few people said they couldn't make it, but surely there's more than this coming. I'll tell you what, they better all had turn off. I've ordered loads of food. Looks like we'll have plenty over then. All right, love. How did your hubby enjoy his cod in sauce? Oh, he didn't. When he left it, he went to the chippy instead. Cheeky meth. I'd have made him, he said. That's amazing, weary, on his head. You look knackered, you know, Rach. Don't you think you're overdoing it? You're working here till late every night and then you spend all day skivvying after them. Yeah, well, I don't mind. Yeah, well, you say that now, but will you be able to keep it up? Yes, of course. Married life, eh? <laughs> you can keep it. Take no notice of them, love. Oh, no, I love it. Getting married was the best thing I've ever done. You see, married life does have a few things going for it. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to be married to get that, though. <laughs> Jacqueline! Yeah, sure. I don't even know what we're doing here. Jackie Dixon hates my guts. No one asked us. And seeing as we've all been getting on together at long last, we should at least make an episode. Hey, Jackie, love. Glad you could make it. The buffet will be open in a minute. Oh, thanks, Ron. But the ale isn't free. Come on, Jimmy, cheer. We should be celebrating your interview. Oh, I don't know how I've gone on yet, do I? Oh, so you said it went well. well? I did, I think. You never know with these things, do you? I saw all those people yeah. waiting. I just thought you shouldn't even be here, Jimmy. You're as good as anyone else. Love, it's a whole different world to what I'm used to. Even if I do get accepted, it's going to be really hard trying to fit in. Come on. No time and all. Thought I'd be entitled to some personal service. Sorry. Nah, don't worry about me. You just stand over there gossiping with your two mates. I sit here on my own all night or something. Working. Is that what you call it? I call it gossiping with your mates all night. Yeah. Where you can stand up here, then, like two big soft kids. And you're a married woman, then. 
Everybody can have a detention, please. Thank you. Thank you. We'll let you gather round. Thanks a lot. You can start serving the champagne now, if you will. Folks, I know that most of you here tonight won't know Jacqueline Dixon, but she's the owner of this bar. And I'd like you all to join us tonight in a little celebration. So before you all get stuck into that luscious buffet, I'd like to say a word or two about this little girl of mine. Dad. Jack, all I want to say, love, is that on behalf of everybody who knows you and loves you, we're all very, very proud of you. <laughs> Jack, you've been dead brave throughout these last few months. But now, hopefully, that the court case is out of the way, you can get on with your life and your very successful business career. Talking of which, I would like you to join me up here now because I have a very special announcement to make. Go on, up you come. Oh, the shame. Come on. The... Come Keep on. the champagne going. Rachel, give us a couple here. Thank you. Here she is. <laughs> hey, you don't often see that. Ah, oh, Jackie stuck for words. <laughs> now, as many of you will know, Jackie has worked very hard to build up two very successful businesses. Yay. And indeed, so proud and confident am I of her future success that while she was in hospital, I decided to make a little investment. However, what she doesn't know is that while she was poorly, her business partner in this bar was threatening to pull out and drop her well and truly in it. What, well, JC? Yeah, love, he wanted out. But I don't think this guy knew a good thing when he saw one because he wanted to put his money somewhere else. Hang on a minute, Dad. JC wanted to pull out and I wasn't even told about it. Yeah, well, you were in hospital, weren't you, love? You know, I didn't want to worry her. Yeah, but... Anyway, I saw this as a golden opportunity, not only to help our Jackie out when she really needed it, but also to invest in a very promising business. You've invested in the bar. <laughs> Correct. So, as from today, me and my little girl here are both 50% owners of Bar Brookie. Yeah. So, to Jackie, sorry, partner, Jackie Dixon. Yeah. Give your remote the night off Four's Friday comedy starts right here next. And has Janice got a surprise for Chandler in Friends? Only I heard what happened, you know, when you've been arrested. We weren't arrested. It's just some things we needed to sort out, that's all. Yeah. Something and nothing, really. Sorry. That I wasn't being nosy or anything. No. Well, look, don't worry about it, sir. We'll be fine. Oh, God. See ya. See ya. Oh, God. I bet they're all talking. Do you think they know? Nah. But people are bound to talk, aren't they? They'll all blow off, don't they? I'll never forget the look on our Jackie's face when I made me announcement. Neither will I. I think she's still in shock. <laughs> How brilliant is me pies? Uh, just sign there for us, please, mate. Certainly will, sir. Cop for that lot, will you, Rach? I suppose for my day off. <laughs> um, what are you doing here? And what have you got them for? We don't do pies. Hey, hey, not everyone goes in for all them little nibbly garlicky things, you know. People like something they can get their teeth into. Dad, this is not the flaming legion. 
Look, I'm really sorry, but there's been a mistake. You're gonna have to take them back. Hey, hang on a minute, love. And you can scrub your signature out and all. I mean, has anyone even asked for pies? Like I said, Mick, all we can do is wait until they make a decision. How long, though? It's driving us mad not knowing what's gonna happen next. I promise. If I hear anything, I'll get onto you straight away. How are you, Mick? Didn't know you were there. Hey, Eleanor, how'd you fancy defending me on a murder charge? Me dad's doing me, is it? I'll be in touch, OK? Hello, Eleanor Kitson. See you at work. Yeah. I won't be a minute. Have a seat. OK. Right, I've made a note of that. I'll call you back later. OK, bye. Sorry to keep you. My new secretary's let me down, dropped me right in it. Well, I can come back later if you're too busy. No, go on. Is it about your case? You're due in court any day now, aren't you? Yeah, tomorrow. But actually, it's not about that. I just need a bit of advice about a business contract. Oh, well, that's not really my thing, to be honest. But if it's something straightforward, I might be able to point you in the right direction. Well, while my eyesight's been bad, my dad's been helping me out at Barbrookie, you know, sorting out paperwork and stuff like that. But without so much as a word to me, he's gone and bought my partner JC's half of the business. He can't just do that, can he? Not without telling me. Well, your partner can sell to anyone he likes. As for your dad, well, legally speaking, he's not obliged to tell you of his plans. Although, morally, you thought he might have mentioned it, of course. Oh, I don't believe it. The thought of being stuck in a partnership with me dad. Your old partner, JC, was it? Well, he could have sold to anyone. At least you know where you are with your dad. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm worried about. Excuse me. Hello, Eleanor Kitson. I'll see you later. Hi, yeah, is Jackie about? Eh, uh, she's just dead out, love. She'll be back in a minute. All right, I've come to sort the mail for her. Uh, uh, no need to bother with that, love. Hold on. It's down to me now. Oh, right. I thought you wanted me to do it. Yeah, well, I'm sure our Jack's very grateful for everything you've done for her, but uh, I can take over now, can't I? I mean, after all, I am a partner. Right, then. I'll go and find. I see if there's anything else she wants me to do. Hey, you've been nursemaid to her long enough. You want to get out there? Get back to running round in your leotards and your leg warms. Anyone would think you were trying to get rid of me. As if. Er, uh, you couldn't do us a favour first, could you, Kate? <sighs> yeah, go on. Get us a cup of coffee. Jackie, can I have a word, please? Yeah, what's up? Well, it's these new rotors. You can't just go cutting everybody's hours without so much as a word. What are you on about? I can cut anyone's hours. Um, I think your dad's just changed the rotors. Oh, oh what's he playing at? So you got to redo them, then? Yeah, and I'll have a look at them. Well, look, Jack, when he tends to put me and Rachel together, we have hardly see each other nowadays. Well, I don't know yet. I can't promise anything. Is my dad in the office? Yeah, he's just sorting through the mail in there. Oh, well, I thought you were going to do that for me. Well, I was, but he told me he was taking over. You've a problem with me and Rachel working together, have you? You didn't mind before. Didn't mind? I've lost count of the number of times I've had to tell you to stop snogging the faces off each other. Casey, any side of that coffee yet, love? I'm gasping here. Yeah, do you know? Hey, don't be waiting on him, hands on foot. You'll have you doing his washing next. Well, as far as I can tell, everything seems to be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Well, if everything's fine, why can't I get pregnant? Well, how long did you say you've been trying? Three months. Well, that's no time at all. Well, it doesn't seem like no time at all to me. I was wondering if there were some tests I could have. Just to make absolutely certain everything's as it should be. But there's no real reason to suspect that it's not. It's far too soon to worry about that. I'd usually wait at least a year before referring someone for tests. A year? Well, I can't wait that long. What if there is something wrong? Shouldn't we be doing something about it now? Well, yes, if there was something wrong, but I do think you're worrying unnecessarily. I can't send you for tests at this stage just so that you can be reassured. I need reassurance now. If you won't refer me for tests, I'll have to go private. Well, that's entirely up to you. I hope you'll feel that it was worthwhile. Well, I'm sure I will. I need some tests for my peace of mind. So will you recommend me a good consultant, or shall I find one for myself? Yeah. Well, JC's the one you should have had a pop at, not me. He's the one who dropped you in, and I was just doing you a favour. Yeah, I know. He should have come to me personally and told me he was pulling out. Then at least I'd have had the chance to do something about it. Come on, Jack. 
Are you seriously trying to tell me that you could have raised enough cash to buy him out? No, probably not when it came down to it. So how did you manage to get your hands on that kind of money? I remortgaged the house. Oh, you never. And I cashed in my pension and a couple of insurance policies. Lost a bundle on them, like, but what else could I do? So you've got nothing left? No money or nothing? Not a bean, love. Oh, Dad, I would never have dreamed of asking you to do that. You should have told me what was going on. Well, how could I? You had enough on your plate. All that worry over your operation and this court case with Leanne. Mm, don't remind me. I just couldn't bear to offload any more problems onto you, love. I just had to do what I thought was best. I'm sorry if it's not what you wanted, but... It was just my way of looking after you. I'm so grateful for what you've done, Dad. Honest. You just didn't plan on getting stuck with your old dad, eh? <laughs> no, it's not about that. I'm just used to running the bar my way. I mean, JC left it all to me. Yeah, that's because he didn't give a sod about this place. It was just another investment to him. But it's different with me, love. I put every penny I've got into Bar Brookie. It's all I've got now. Yeah, I know. But you've got to ask yourself, Dad, what do you really know about running a cafe bar? About as much as you did when you first started, love. Look, this is my last chance to make a future for myself, Jack, to prove that I can do it. Things have been really bad for me these last few months, you know. Losing the trade and post and the moby and all. I know it's been that tough for you. That's why you should be taking things easy. I mean, you could just be a sleeping partner. You'd still make money on your investment. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. Me sitting at home with time on my hands when there's work to be done here. I'm sorry, love, but we've got to find a way to work together. I've put everything I've got into this place, so I've got to do everything I can to make sure it's a success. There you go. 80p, please. Thanks. Well, Mick seems a bit fed up. Is he feeling a bit under the weather? On the sniff for a bit of gossip, are you? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't tell me you didn't hear all about us being taken down the police station. Yeah, well, I did hear something, but it's no one else's business, is it? No, it isn't. Doesn't stop everyone jangling on about us, though, does it? I suppose not. Listen, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it. This time next week, people have forgotten all about it. If the doctor says everything's fine, why go to see a specialist for tests? But she's just a GP, Max. I need to see a specialist. Well, what? Was there something she thought she couldn't spot or wanted to take precautions? No, Max. We need to sit around on my backside just waiting for nature to take its course. All I want to do is take control of the situation. <sighs> oh, you should be pleased. I am, but why put yourself through the trauma of having tests when it might not be necessary? Not to mention the expense. I mean, I assume you're going private. <laughs> I need to know if I'm able to have another baby. I know deep down in my heart everything will be all right. I just need proof. That's all for my own peace of mind. Well, if you're sure that's what you want. Well, look at it this way. If I'm given the all clear and I still can't conceive, you'll know the fault doesn't lie with me. Oh. Hi, Nell. Everything OK? Not really, no. Why well, is nothing wrong with the food, is there? Mind you, that doesn't look very substantial for a working girl. The salad's fine. No, I'm just having a few teething problems with the business. Oh, uh, yeah. What's up? My secretary's let me down. I've been left in the lurch. Just can't get the stuff these days, can you, right? What happened to good old-fashioned loyalty? <laughs> Actually, it was good old-fashioned loyalty that kept her where she is. I was trying to poach her from my old practice. Oh, well, there you go. Um. What kind of help would you be looking for, you know? Do you want somebody with loads of qualifications and all that like? <laughs> well, I will need someone qualified eventually. But in the short term, anyone with half a brain would do. I need somebody to answer the phone and do a bit of typing, really. Help me out of a hole, basically. Oh, well, in that case, I think I might just have the person you need. Really? Katie, love. Can I have a word, please? One thing's for sure, when we do have our baby, I'll want to move away from here. Well, I thought you liked it around here. I mean, it's close to Grants and convenient for the city centre. I don't want a child of mine being brought up next to all these no-hopers. I mean, Jimmy Corkill and now Mick Johnson. I mean, with all these rumours flying around, I just don't know what to believe. What rumours? You know, what 
Julia told us. About Mick and Elaine being dragged off to the police station. Well, look, they're back home now, so I don't think it was anything serious. Mick! All right, babe. What are you doing here? Oh, Mick, I can't stand it anymore. Everyone's asking questions. Yeah, we'll just tell them to mind their own, because they don't know what they're talking about. I just want to get away from them all. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, don't pretend you're bothered. You just want the gossip like everyone else. I'm not sure this is a good idea. I don't know anything about law. Oh, that's all right. Helen is going to be getting a proper legal secretary eventually. She just wants a dog's body for now. Oh, right. I think Girl Friday would be a better description. But I'm a dancer, not a secretary, and my typing's not that good. What? Hey, fingers are fire, this girl, I'm telling you, Helen. Must be 60 words a minute, innit? Is he your agent? No, oh, just helping a friend out in need, that's all. Oh, you're all heart, Mr Dixon. So, how about it, Katie? Are you willing to give it a go? Just in the short term? Well, I'd need to have time off for auditions and gigs. No problem. As long as you could give me a day's notice. I'd just be grateful for whatever time you could give me. And it would only be temporary. I tell you what, let me clear it with Jackie first. Make sure she can manage without me. No, that's all right, love. She's got me in her beck and call now, hasn't she? No, no, you take it. We don't need you. Let me know as soon as you can, will you? Yeah. Sorry. Good afternoon, Eleanor Kitson. What are you doing? What's it look like? Elaine, will you stop it? We've got to get away. We can't just sit round here waiting for the police to arrest us. We've got no choice. We just can't run away. We're going. As soon as the kids get in, we're off. I know it won't be easy, but at least we'll be together. Elaine, will you just stop and think about what you're doing? We've got to go, Mick. If we stay here, we could end up in prison. It won't come to that. It might come to that. We're up on a murder charge, and the judge will have no choice. He'll have to send us to prison. Look, get a grip. What did Eleanor tell us, eh? Most cases like this don't even get to court. Well, what about the kids? They'll probably end up in a home somewhere. God knows what will happen to them. Elaine, it's me, Cassie. Please let me in, Elaine. What's all this? We're leaving. You can't. Why? What are you going to do? Report us to the police? We're going nowhere. If we do a run it looks like we're guilty. And you and me have got nothing to hide. You've done nothing wrong, Lane. You just let yourself trust the wrong person. Well, change the record, will you, Cassie? Me and Mick are in this together. <sighs> Please, Elaine. You've got to face it. It was him who got you into this mess. That's enough, Cassie. Getting too close to the truth, am I? Hey, that'll be the day. You know what? The truth has been staring you in the face for months now, but you just can't see it. Oh, please, don't argue. What? You come round here mouthing off, forcing your warped opinions down our throats like you've got some God-given right, and we're supposed to sit here and take it. You know what? You're nothing but an emotional coward. You couldn't face up to what was happening to your mum. All them weeks she was in pain, and all you could think about was yourself. That's not true. That's not true. Make now stop it. Your mum asked you to help her. She talked to you about mercy killing. She practically begged you to help do something about the pain. And what did you do? You refused to listen. No! You turned your back on her when she needed you the most. Well, didn't you? in the office. Well, you're not giving up his answer, are you? No, I'm only doing it to help her out. It won't be for long. It's about the blue, isn't it? Did she just come up to you and ask you? Well, not exactly. Your dad sourced her. Can't you want to see the back of me? Hey, Dad. I hear you're branching out into recruitment now. Just doing someone a favour, that's all. Yeah, yourself. Jackie, I am your partner, you know, love. I might as well take over where Katie left off. Mm, I suppose so. You're not as good looking as Katie, but you'll just have to do. <laughs> Listen, I'll only go over to OK with you. You know, I don't want to leave it in the lurch or nothing. No, you're all right. My eyesight's a lot better now. And as much as I hate to say it, my dad's right. I'm stuck with him now. I'll tell you what, why don't you leave him to it? Maybe we could go out in the town or our air down. Right, smile a while. What's to do with your face? Nothing. Hey, Christian, what's Rachel doing tonight? Well, we're just both working different shifts. We hardly ever see each other. So we thought we'd enjoy a rare night in together. 
Trish doesn't seem to do anything these days, does she? She's either working here or playing house with soft lads. I know, it's like she's aged 20 years or something since they moved in together. Hey, new Christians turned into our own Stepford wives. I'd hurry up and rescue her then, I'd me before it's too late. We'll drag her out for a night on the razz and remind her what she's missing. Yeah, right, you're on. I'll just take this stuff up. Sorry, I panicked. I just wanted to get away. Uh, I know, babe. I don't blame you. But like I said, it solved nothing. Go on, tell them. Must be the kids. Just leave me alone. We're in here. What on earth's happened to you, girl? You look a mess. Hey, hey, what's going on? Nothing. She's been in the face. You snitch. You haven't been fighting, have you, love? It's not like you. It was nothing. Some kids are being picking on it. What have they been saying? It'll all be a pack of lies. Well, come on, love. Come on, you might as well tell them. Everyone's saying you're going to prison. That the police are going to come and lock you, though. Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself. What do you expect me to wear when I'm cleaning? Well, down in Tiara. Listen, Mrs. Mock, we've come to take you away from all this. Yes, yeah, so hang up your hair net and come out for a night on the town. Oh, no, I can't. Not tonight. Why not? Me and Chris are having a quiet night in. Said I'd cook him something special. Well, I'm sure it won't kill him to cook his own tea for once. Yeah, well, I want to do it. No one's making me. Well, come on, Rach. Get your glad dragged out the mothballs and come out for a night with us. It'll be a laugh. No, honest, I best stay in. We've already planned it. Chris is expecting me to be here. Oh, God, what's the matter with you? You make him sound like your dad or something. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that to sound like it did. It's all right, don't matter. Just worries about you, that's all. Yeah, well, there's no need. I'm fine. I have never been happier. Well, you just take a look at yourself. You're up and down like a yo-yo. Chill out, will you? What's wrong? You're wanting to make the place look nice for him. For us? It's our home. <sighs> Look, I know you two think I'm just being soft. But it's my way of showing him that I love him. Yeah, well, fair dues, but well, there's got to be more to life than rearranging piles of dust. It's all right for you two. You've only got yourselves to think about. Chris is my priority now. Well, how is it? You seem to be bending over backwards to please him. When I don't see him putting himself out for you. Yeah, well, you don't know him like I do. He'd do anything for me. Look, Rach, we don't want to have a go at anything. We're just wondering what happened to our mate. You've really changed since you got married. That is because I'm not some little kid anymore. I've grown up, that's all. Yeah, but that doesn't mean to say you'd have to turn into some boring old drone who does nothing but cook and clean. You haven't got a clue what it's like being in a loving, lasting relationship. I don't think either of you two have been out with anyone for longer than a couple of months. So I don't see how you can stand there handing out advice to me. And if you don't mind, I'd like to get on with things now. Now, the next time you hear something like that said about me and Mick, I just want you to ignore them, all right? Yeah, they're just doing it to cause trouble, that's all. I mean, they like hating and upsetting people. And all you can do is take no notice. Everyone's saying you and Mick got arrested. What was that for? Yeah, why did you have to go down the busies? We weren't arrested. The police just wanted to talk to us, that's all. What about? It's nothing for you to worry about. You can't just say that. Something's going on, we know this. Like Elaine said, there's nothing to worry about. Let's just leave it like that, Asa. Are you and Elaine going to prison, Dad? Of course not, James. We're not going to prison. Everything's gonna be all right. I promise. Mm, looks lovely. Do you know, I love it when it's like this. Just the two of us together. We're we'll gonna have a lovely little meal in our own place. Makes me feel like, I don't know, like we're a real couple. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Jackie and Katie asked me to go out with them tonight. I'm dead glad I said no. Where would they go? Going into town, clubbing it as usual. You know what, after today, I think you might be right about them two. You know, being jealous of our relationship. What makes you say that? Well, they think I've gone dead boring since I got married. <laughs> they reckon all I do is run about after you all day. They've got a nerve, haven't they? They're the ones always coming round here, looking for someone to play out with. Do you know what? I hate it when someone has a go at you. I know it's old-fashioned and all that, but I just feel like I want to protect you. Oh, that's dead sweet. 
Don't think they've got a point, though, do you, Rach? You have been working really hard lately. Don't think you're taking on too much. No. I just want everything to be perfect for us. It is perfect. I tell you, though, I'll have to keep an eye on them, too. I'm trying to lead my wife astray. Don't be daft. I won't take any notice of them. <laughs> we don't need anyone else, do we? Not as long as we've got each other. I wonder what one would have made of this. She's trying to save us trouble, not cause it. Oh, if the police are going to prosecute, I just wish they'd get on with it. Oh, they'll never prosecute you, I'm sure. It'll come to nothing. It's not me and Mick I'm worried about. It's the kids. You've seen what kind of a state they're in. God, I am so sorry. How the hell didn't I keep my mouth shut? Don't ask me. I only did it because I wanted to do what was right for me, Mum. I just wanted justice. I can understand you wanting to lash out. But the kids are completely innocent. They've done nothing wrong. I know. I'm going to have to tell them now, you know. You know, not if the police don't take this any further. It's gone too far already. The kids aren't stupid, you know. We can't keep fobbing them off like we did today. We've got no choice now. I'm going to have to tell Tanya. Elaine, you can't. She thought the world of a nanny would break her heart. Well, you should have thought about that before you went running off to the police. Brookside magazine is out now in most of the usual shops, priced £1.95. Next on four, the dress is ready and the mother-in-law's in tears. One of four's Shirley Valentine's is getting married on a Greek island of dreams. that post for me? Not a sausage, mate. There isn't a sausage wait before, is it? I thought I would have heard from that college by now. Well, I wouldn't know me breath if I were you. Oh, well, thank you for your vote of confidence. Jimmy, you need all kinds of qualifications to get into college. <laughs> well, you've got your birth certificate. Oh, is that right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Well, all right, what exams have you got? I gave myself a few O-levels. And I gave myself a few A-levels. I'm on the fast track, mate. Oh, you never forget all about that university of life stuff. Got to break a few rules as you go along. Play them at their own game. You sell your own grandmother, you. All right. Got a buyer, have you? Morning. Oh, yeah. Morning. Very right, good. Uh, my mum asked me to see how you're getting on with the christening. Sound, yeah? Oh, listen, that reminds me. I wanted to have a word with you about being our little Billy's godfather. Don't worry. I've got it all sorted out. Even managed to get that egg stain off me, Bessie time. I am being serious here. I just want you to do the job properly. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll get there on time and I won't drop him in the front. Can't say any fairer than that, can you? Look, I just want you to give the kid some moral guidance. If you're not up to the job, I'll find someone else. Uh, all right, no need for that. I'll do my best, OK? Yeah. Hope he doesn't expect me to take little Billy to church every week as well. Anyway, I've had enough of telling lies. I can't expect a kid would cope with something like that, you know. Police can it? They wouldn't come around the back, would they? Come in, pull tax. Oh. oh yeah, you're right. Just thought I'd bring you bin round the back. 
Don't want the neighbours complaining about your load on the zone, do we? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, is this a good time to call? I can always come back later. Well, you're all right, mate. Still trying to pick our way through all this mess, you know. And things weren't bad enough. My name wants to tell Tanya. Oh. Oh. Sorry, baby. It's in bad news. You what? You go on to me about not telling anyone, and then you casually tell me that Sinbad knows. Look, I'm sorry, but I had to talk to somebody. <gasps> Look, Elaine, it's all right, you know. I mean, I won't breathe a word to anybody, honest. So who else have you told, huh? All the neighbours? Anyone who comes into the shop? Does everybody know? Of course not. Come on, Mick, who else knows? Well, just Jimmy and Jackie. Oh. And you've got the nerve to tell me that I can't tell Tanya. Look, your Cassie told Jackie. Well, if all the neighbours are in on it, I don't see why I shouldn't tell Tanya. After all, she's the only one around here who's got a real right to know. A right to know what? Jeez, <sighs> Rach. You're too good to me, you know. I do my best. Hey, shouldn't you be out working on early today? Yeah, no, I overslept. Couldn't drag myself out of bed. Anyway, it don't matter if I'm late. Jackie's off to court. You little sky view. Yeah, and well, I want to spend as much time with you as I can. How are they going to see each other again today? It's stupid. And when the cancer family took over, we all thought she'd drift away peacefully, like. But it wasn't like that at all. Towards the end, she was really suffering. But you saw that yourself, didn't you? And when the pain got too much for her, well, me and Mick, we couldn't stand behind just do nothing. So what did you do then? We, um... We helped her on her way. She'd already asked us if we would. So... When the time came, and the pain got so bad for her, we just went along with her wishes. We helped your nan to go to leave the pain behind. You killed her. Who did it? You or me? We were both responsible. How did you do it then? Tanya, don't make this any worse than it already is. How could it be any worse? My nan's dead and it's all because of you and me. Oh, hello. So what's the excuse today, then? Did Christian have you redecorating the flat before you came in? I'm sorry. You don't have to blame Christian every time, you know. Yeah, well, I just think you could have let me know if you were going to be late. You'd only live ten yards away. I've said I'm sorry. All right, Jack, she's only a bit late, isn't she? I know she is here. Why don't you let her get on with the job? We can get off. Yeah, OK. I'm sorry, Ray, she didn't mean it. I'm just a bit wound up, that's all. I feel like I've been waiting months to see Leanne get what's coming to her. Now, all of a sudden, it's here. Yeah, I know. I hope it goes all right for you. Of course it will. And I'm telling you, it'll be well worth the wait once we see that one sent down. Five years she could get. And I hope she saves every minute of it. Come on, love, let's go. I feel like everyone's talking about us, gossiping. It's like the whole world's closing in on us. Leo and Tanya are up the wall with it. Well, I haven't said anything to anyone, mate, you know. Hey, I know. That's it. These things have a habit of getting out, don't they? Mm. I mean, the kids are getting loads of hassle, you know. All right, lads. Hey, Sin, you don't want to be seen sitting around with Mick, you know. You'd be getting yourself a bad name with the busies. <laughs> hey, what do you mean by that? All right, Mick, I'm only joking. Sorry, open my mouth. See what I mean? Everyone knows something's going on. God knows how they'll treat us if we do get arrested. Hi, Mick. Look, is your Elaine coming in today, and you could do it somehow? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Linz. Uh, she's a bit under the weather, you know. Nothing serious, is it? No, no. It'll all be sorted out soon, one way or the other. Morning, team. Well, this is all right, isn't it? Nice little relaxé view. Anyone would think you didn't have any work to go to. Hey, don't be out at you. Jimmy, I'm my own boss, aren't I? I mean, I might spend five minutes in the shop to sell you, but I don't want to strain myself. <laughs> hey, uh, boss, I wanted to have a little word. It's about the Kristen. What about her? Well, uh, Jackie's asked me to organise things, you know, just a few bevies, a little bit of decent scran and that. Uh, only thing is, I'm a bit hard up at the moment. 
Not after a sub, eh? No, no, nothing like that. I was just wondering if you'd do us a bit of a deal. I was going to put in a bulk order, you know, for a load of fish and chips and that, like. No way, Dad. What, have you told your missus about this? He's got a death wish him, hasn't he? Fish and chips for a christening. All right, all right. Hang about, will you? Be a nice surprise for her. Oh, it'll be that all right. She's going to take a wobbly, you daft get. Why didn't you get Mick to give you all the pies that have gone past the sell-by date? You might as well go the whole hog. All right, all right. Point taken. No imagination used, lot. Do you know that? You did it. You killed me, Nan. I hate you. She told me all about it. Tanya, I hate it Tanya, as well. Tanya, you... come on, love. Come on, take Why? it easy. Tanya, cool it, will you, love? Lindsay, get back in the shop. Yeah, go on, Lindsay. Go on. Come on, Tanya, let's go on. I'm not going anywhere with you. Don't touch me. Hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, that's all we need. Nothing, Julia. Just a bit of a family disagreement, that's all. The poor girl's in bits. What's it been doing, you love? You tell your auntie Julia. Look, Julia, love, this has got nothing to do with you. You can hold your water and all you. Come on, love, you come with me. I want to see my auntie Cassie. All right, love, come on, I'll take you over there. She tells Julia about it. Might as well make an announcement on Radio City. I'd better get over there. Mick, just leave it, will you? You're only going to make matters worse. Just give it a little bit of time to yourself. Let her get her head around it. Good morning. What's wrong? I don't know what's up with her, love. Nothing to do with all that police business, is it? Uh, thanks for bringing her over. Junior, I'll look after her now. Oh, don't bother to thank me, love. Any decent person would have done the same. Yeah, well, thanks for your help. Much appreciated. I would have stayed a bit longer, love, only I've got another mission of mercy to attend to in court supporting Jackie Dixon. She might act tough, but underneath, oh, she's just like Jerry. Uh, well, see you, Julia. Oh, I hope you're feeling better soon. And whatever's happened, nothing is that bad. Come on, love. Let's go on here. Mum's told you, hasn't she? You're not in the all, are you? No, I'm not. There's only one person to blame for all this, Mick Johnson. But my mum said they did it together. She's protecting them, that's all. What if she ends up in prison? She won't, love. She will. She'll get locked away forever and she'll deserve it. She shouldn't have killed me, Nan. Oh, I'm so sorry, love. How did the police find out? Who told them? Oh, no, no, you never. I had to. Why? Oh, believe me, I did it for your nan. Your mum did what she thought was right. I had to do what my conscience told me. I regret it now, I really do. But it's too late to go back and undo it. I just want to get on with it. After I'm not waiting over these past few months. <sighs> There's no way I'm going back to that house. Not now. Look, I know you just feel like lashing out, and I don't blame you. But you're really going to have to try to forgive your mum and Mick. Why should I? It's as much for your sake as it is for theirs. <sighs> Look, at a time like this, you really need to stick together. Your mum's going to need all the support you can give her. I know. Everybody's going to be against her, aren't they? Once they know what she's done. Some might actually take their side, think what they did was right. I don't care. I know they were wrong. Your mum is punishing herself enough over all this. She's got to live with what she's done for the rest of her life. That can't be easy, can it? No. Go home, Tanya. Make it up with her. Only get one, Mum. Right, let's get this show on the road. May it please Your Honour, I appear for the prosecution, and my learned friend, Mr Dobson, appears for the defence. Would Your Honour like me to remind him of the facts of the case? Thank you, they would be helpful. As Your Honour knows, the defendant, Miss Leanne Powell, has now pleaded guilty to the charge of grievous bodily harm with intent. Miss Powell was a frequent customer at a cafe bar owned by Miss Jacqueline Dixon, when, for reasons I need not go into now, Miss Dixon saw fit to exclude her from the premises on a permanent basis. Yeah. 
And go on, I'll tell them why. Miss Powell took exception. Girl's a bloody prosy. And chose to show her displeasure by spraying a caustic substance into Miss Dixon's face. For information on the nature of that substance, please see the report for Mr. Dawson, the eye surgeon, on the depositions, page 17. You will see that although Miss Dixon has not been rendered totally blind, her eyesight has been substantially affected, and it is too early to say precisely what the end result will be. These are the facts, Your Honour. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. Starry, <clears throat> I'm going to do better myself. She's a waste of space here, and the money are on. <clears throat> Scandalous. Well, what about everything I went through? Not knowing if I'd ever be able to it's see it again. She can't just leave it at that. Your Honour, the first thing that must be said of my client is that she, too, has suffered a great deal as a result of this incident. Oh, get your flaming tissues out. <sighs> I went to see Auntie Cassie. She told me to come home. Come on, let's get you inside, eh, love? You shouldn't have done it, Mum. But I don't want them to send you to prison. Oh, Tan. I loved your Nan as much as you did. She was my mum. I didn't want her to die, especially not like that. But we can't turn the clock back, can we? Hmm? We've got to live with the consequences, whatever they are. Furthermore, my client has changed her plea to guilty. Indeed, Miss Powell's actions have upset her to such a degree that she can barely face up to what she has done. Lying. By changing her plea to guilty, she has saved the witnesses the ordeal of having to take the stand, and she has saved the court valuable time and trouble. Yes, yeah, so I will give her some credit for that. Give the girl a coconut. Leanne Powell is one of life's unfortunates. Coming from a volatile, often violent home, she has had to learn to fend for herself from a very early age, and she has never done anything of this nature ever before. She was under unbearable stress at the time this event took place. Her financial situation was dire, and that was why she was driven out of sheer desperation into prostitution. Being unaccustomed to such a lifestyle, Miss Powell was an innocent abroad, unable to look after herself in what must be for a Vulnerable young woman, a very frightening situation. Indeed, she has already been the victim of a brutal attack at the hands of one of her clients. <laughs> if he carries on like this, the beginning of the Nobel so Peace as Prize. See, Your Honor, she has I wouldn't be surprised. He hasn't done a term with her himself. And this is why she was carrying the spray, which she truly believed contained nothing more than a mild irritant. She saw it merely as a deterrent. And this is why she was shocked to discover the extent of the damage she had inflicted upon her former friend, Miss Dixon. I feel it worth mentioning, Your Honour, that the two women had been very good friends, even from their school days. Look at her! She's laughing at me! Jackie, come on, love. Take it easy. Is there a problem? Uh, no. No, Your Honour. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, he's just got a bit of indigestion, Your Honour. He can't sit still for long. Leanne Powell is not a hardened criminal, Your Honour. She is a sad, somewhat troubled young woman whose desperation drove her to this dreadful action. Under the circumstances, I would ask Your Honour to be as merciful to her as possible. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. I would like to think over what you've just said to me. I will pass sentence in two hours. I'll grant the defendant bail within the building until then, but she must not leave the premises. All rise. Fiasco. Anyone I think Leanne Powell was the victim and not your Jackie. She's gonna get off with it, isn't she? The smug little cow's gonna get away with ruining my life. Tanya, you all right now? Yeah, Elaine rang. Apparently she's gone back home. I'm just grateful she hasn't done a run, I said. Yeah. What a mess. It's all running away from us, isn't it? Hiya. Hi, Rach. 
Can I have a meat and potato pie, please? Hey, he's already got one warmer in his armpits, haven't you, miss? <laughs> Is that your fella's tea? I thought you'd do something called on Blair. No, it's for me. I've sneaked out for a late dinner. I just needed a rest. Are we boring you? There you go, Rich. Mm. Get a couple of mastics for your eyes, I know. Mm, knackered. I've been so busy lately. Thanks. See ya. Ta ra, babe. Listen, Simbad. Look, if me and Elaine do go to prison, look, it won't come to that. Look, if we do, we're going to need someone to look after the kids. And now I know it's a hell of a lot to ask, but yeah. You know I love them kids to pieces, and I'd look after them like a shot if it came to that. But I know it won't. You've got to push thoughts like that to the back of your mind. Stop being so pessimistic. Dad, if I have to go back in there and listen to any more of that crap, I think I'm gonna puke. There's still time, love. It's not over yet. Where there's life, there's hope. Here, love. Drink this, study your nerves. Thanks, Julia. Cheers, love. Oh, you can get your own if you'd only carry two. You need asbestos hands with these flimsy cups. Why not they twist the truth like that? <laughs> they made it sound like she's the victim. She's gonna get away with it, isn't she? The judge can't be that stupid. He's gotta send her down. I mean, the girl's pleaded guilty, for God's sake. What more is there to say? Oh, I feel for you, love. I really do. I mean to say, I'm not one for violence, but if you ask me, that flippity giblet needs punching. I just feel so angry. I mean, what have I got to do to make myself hurt? Over these past few months, all the waiting and worrying, day after day, well, the only thing that kept me going was the belief that I'd see justice done in the end. But they made a joke out of what I've suffered. Where's the justice in that? Oh, no, what time is it? Oh, God, I must have fallen asleep. I only meant to rest my eyes for a minute. I better get back to hey, work. Stop getting yourself all wound up. I'll make you a cup of coffee. Wake you up a bit. Oh, I only came up for a quick break. Jackie will go berserk when she finds out. Yeah, well, there's no need for her to find out, is there? Because she's not in work today. Remember? I know I was going to tidy the place up a bit before you got back. It's a right mess. Stop panicking, will ye? Look at the state of ye. Oh, sorry, Chris, but I look a mess as well. You're worn out, girl. If you carry on like this, you're going to make yourself ill. No, I'm OK, honest. Look, just sit down and relax. I'm starting to worry about you. If you don't slow down and take things easy, something's got to give. In considering passing sentence, I have borne in mind everything that has been said on your behalf by Mr Dobson. I acknowledge your guilty plea and apparent feelings of remorse. You have never been in trouble before. And it is clear that a prison sentence would weigh much more heavily upon you than if you had been a hardened criminal. However, the terrible consequences of your actions will be with Miss Dixon for life. Therefore, the least sentence I can pass upon you for this offence of grievous bodily harm with intent is three years imprisonment. No, no! It's not enough. Jackie, please. There don't. will be silence in court. Let the prisoner be taken down. Hey, what are you doing? This is like some sick joke. She'll probably be out in here. Young lady, please control yourself. Oh, Jack, this isn't going to do any good. You've got no idea what I've had to go through, have you? I've had to have an operation, grafts on both my eyes. And now I've got to live with the fact that he could be rejected at any time. I've got five years to wait before I know if I'll keep my eyesight or not. Five years. This isn't safe. Us. You got any idea what it feels like to have that hanging over you? Jackie, love, you're going to get yourself into all kinds of trouble here. Miss Dixon, while I am aware that you have suffered, you must accept the ruling of this court. You know what, you Jackie, they'll have you locked up and all. She's manipulated the lot of you with the pathetic sob stories. I'm telling you, this is your idea to justice. You can shove Please it. Please remove her from court. Oh, God. It's just like being on the telly, this. Hey, come on, there's no need for that. Let go of it. Yeah, that's right. Have me dragged off out your side. You don't want to hear the truth, do you? Oh, right, I better get back to work. I'll have to lie, say I was ill or something. But you think I'm really lazy falling asleep like that, don't you? But I am trying my best, you know. Hey, I know you are. I can see that. I just can't bear to see you run yourself into the ground like this. Hey, it's a pity we couldn't afford a cleaner. Then you could go off to work and come home to a nice clean flat. Even if we could afford it, I don't think I'd like that. I want to look after you. It's my job. No, maybe we should ask Julie Brogan on what she charges. 
I'm not having her nosing around poking through my underwear. Well, look, maybe you should have a word with Jackie, get her to reduce your hours at the bar. You know, give yourself a bit of breathing space. Well, what about the money? We need every penny we can get at the moment. Money's not everything, is it, Rachel? It is when you've not got any. There's far more important things than money. I mean, you're held for one. And what about us? It's been murder these past few weeks. We hardly ever see each other. It's doing my head in. Me too. It's not enough, is it? Snatching the odd hour together here and there. No, I think you're right. We can't carry on as we are, can we? The most important thing in my life is our marriage. I don't want to come second to some poxy job. It's not fair on either of us. Maybe I should give up work altogether. Then I could devote all my time to us. Oh, but you enjoy your job, don't you, Rach? Getting out meeting people. I wouldn't expect you to sacrifice all that for me. No, I'd be doing it for us. But wouldn't you be bored at home all day? No, be brilliant. Well, I've got to admit, Rach, it sounds like the answer to all our problems. But you've got to do what you think's right. I can't make that decision for you. Just as long as you know that whatever you do decide to do, I'll be behind you all the way. Next on 4, two babies are switched at birth, but it's not until seven years later that a mother discovers the truth. The search is on for someone else's child. Our drama after the break. is for Naughty mum, you left you with a stinky bum, eh? No, she's naughty, isn't she? You see, Billy, your mum beckons that she knows all there is to know about this business, but we both know that your old dad's a bit of a dab and at it and all, isn't he, eh? Come on, oh, let's get this smelly thing off you. Give us the best, will you, love? What are you doing? Well, what's it look like? I'm changing our Billy, aren't I? His name's William, and I've only just changed him. Jimmy, look at this. Talk about throwing good money away. Look, it's ruined. That won't stick again. It'll be all right. Use a bit of sellotape on it. Get lost. I'm not letting our William go to his christening in a sellotape nappy. Well, why not? It's not as if anyone will know. It'll be hidden under his kex, won't it? Yes, well, I'll know, Jimmy, and that's enough for me. Morning. Hi, love. Anything for me there, love? Nah, there's nothing from your college. I don't believe it. Thought I would have heard something. They don't half drag things out. I'm sure they do it on purpose, just to make you lose interest. Ah, oh, it was lovely, that, Rach. What time's it? Mm, what time you were leaving? Ah, oh, I don't even feel like going in. I just feel like staying here all day with you. Well, why don't you, then? You're a bad influence on me. You'll get me this sack. Mm, they can sack me any time. I couldn't care less. What? So, you decided to pack your job in? Still thinking about it. Well, only do it if it's what you think's right. I well, know. I've had enough of the way things are at the moment. Well, whatever you do decide to do, I'll be behind you all the way. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for being so good about all this. No problem. See you later. See ya. Hi, hi, Mick. All right, Jimmy. Look, uh, do you mind opening up for us? The lane won't be coming in again. She's not quite up to it, you know. Uh, well, me and Lindsay are off today. Didn't the lane tell you? I mean, we sorted it with her a couple of weeks ago. It's, uh, well, it's our little Billy's christening today. Oh, of course, yeah. It slipped my mind. Um, it's OK, I'll sort something out. Listen, I'd love to help you out, but, well, it's... Hey, look, it's OK. I understand, Jimmy. Yeah. Have a good day, yeah. Hey, look, I'll tell you what. I'll put in a couple of hours later on. I mean, we're only having a little bit of a buffet. I can easily slip away. Can't let the side down, can I? Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. See you later. Oh, 
Morning, Jacqueline. Oh, what time did you get in? Oh, I've been in since early doors, love. No point of sitting at home and there's things to do, is there? What was in the post? Oh, nothing for you to bother your pretty little head about. That's not what I asked you. I want to be kept informed about everything that comes in. Yeah, OK, love, fair enough, yeah. Uh, well, there's a couple of invoices for the groceries, a load of junk mail about a new soft drink, oh, and uh, a job inquiry. Like I say, nothing important. Well, don't you think that's for me to decide? Look, Dad, I don't mean to be ungrateful or anything, but I am sick of people treating me like I don't exist because of what happened to me. What? Well, it's like yesterday with that cow, Leanne. She nearly blinds me, but only gets given a lousy three-year sentence for doing it. And to top it all, I get removed from court because I dare to get obsessed about it. And now it's the same with this place. You seem to be making all the decisions, and what I say doesn't seem to matter anymore. Oh, come on, love. It's a bit strong, that, isn't it? I mean, how can you possibly compare what Leanne did to what I've done? I don't believe this. I practically saved your bacon. I only stepped in because I knew that you wouldn't be able to cope. Dad, I am not a little girl anymore. And I happen to think I've been doing very well. It was your business that filled, as you remember, not mine. Are you sure it's not you who couldn't cope? Hey, now, you just hold on, madam. I am not having that. You wouldn't even have Barbrook if it wasn't for me. And the way that you carried on in court yesterday proves you're not ready to cope on your own yet, flying off the handle like that. And quite frankly, Jackie, I don't care what you think. Now, I have put an awful lot of money into this venture, and I fully intend to protect my investment. So, like it or not, miss, I am here to stay. Hey, all right, Peter. Oh, hello, Peter. What are you doing here? I didn't realise you were a friend of Jimmy Corkill's. Actually, Julia, it was Lindsay who invited me. Are things getting serious between you two, then? No, Julia, we're just good friends. God, she's like my mother, this one. If I so much as look at a woman, she's got me married off. Hey, nothing gets past Julia. She'd have made a good goalie. <laughs> oh. Hey, never mind mocking you. I only ask because I care. And I don't want you falling in with the wrong kind. Well, what's wrong with Lindsay? Oh, well, she's a lovely girl and all that, but at the end of the day, she's still a core kill. And we all know that trouble just follows that family. Hey, hang on, Julie. You can't be tarring them all with the same brush. Well, we've already had a clear case of following your father's footsteps as little Jimmy. God rest his soul. God help the poor little fella. That's all I can say. Here they are, It's lovely to see you, Mr and Mrs Corkill. And how's the baby? Oh, he's great, thanks. Um, this is my daughter, Lindsay. She's standing as godmother today, Vicar. I'm very pleased to meet you. And has the godfather arrived? Yeah, he's over there. And did you manage to read the notes I gave you? Dead right, yeah. I've been practising them, we look. Yeah. <laughs> I know my part off by heart, Vicar. <laughs> right. We might as well get started. I suggest you bring the baby down to the font. And he is to be christened William James Corkill. Actually, Vicar, it's Billy James Corkill. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I thought I had it written down somewhere that he is to be called William. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I put it on the card myself. That's his name. Right. I'd better get going. What time's your appointment at the clinic? Not until this afternoon. Oh, I know it's silly, but... Well, I feel really nervous. I've got butterflies in my stomach. You know, I still can't see why you can't just let nature take its course instead of paying all those ridiculous consultancy fees. It's money well spent, Max, if it gives me peace of mind in any way. There's nothing wrong with giving nature a helping hand. Well, as long as it makes you happy, then it's well worth the expense. Now, are you sure you don't want me to come with you? No, I'll be fine. Right. See you later. Bye. Jimmy, I am going to swing for you in a minute. What do you think you're playing at, eh? I thought we'd agreed on calling him William James Corkill. Yeah, I know. But I just can't get used to it, can I? I've tried, and I can't get used to it. I just don't feel comfortable. No one is going to be landed with a name like William for the rest of his life. He'll sound a right divvy. Billy, it's more normal, isn't it? What's the order? I'm starving here. Ooh, I hope they played on a decent buffet. Apparently, they still can't decide on a name. What? 
And he said they'd come all this way to church and they still hadn't thought of a name. <laughs> well, isn't that just like the Cork Hills? Well, they've agreed on a middle name. James. Oh, another Jimmy? <laughs> Talk about tempting fate. I mean, say, it's hardly been lucky for the other two, has it? Do you know what? I'm sorry about this. I thought we'd be in and out. <laughs> no, not to worry, mate. I had nothing else planned. Well, oh, it's just as well, isn't it? Those two will be at it all day. That's if the vicar doesn't end up throwing us all out. <laughs> so what is it after, dear? Back to yours? Yep. Unfortunately, if new mum hasn't murdered me dad. <laughs> <laughs> His name's William. Yeah, but people will only end up calling him Billy anyway. <sighs> Look, love, it's Liverpool. People short names in Liverpool. Jack leans Jack. Lindsay's Lynn's. You're not going to be able to stop it, love. People will only call him Billy if we don't correct them. I mean, no one calls Prince William Prince Billy, do they? Uh, no, 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 listen, Jimmy. You are not going to put me off because I've made my mind up. His name is William, not Billy. And that's final. Right. Well, we'll go and tell the vicar then, shall we? Keep your right once you get home. Do you reckon? Well, there's no point sitting at home just worrying yourself sick, is he? I mean, we don't even know if we've got anything to worry about yet. It's the way they like to play it, isn't it? They make you think you got away with it, and then just when you think it's all over, they pounce. Hey, what's all this got away with it nonsense? I told you, babe, me and you have done nothing wrong. And the police must have realised that too, otherwise we'd have heard something by now. Let's try and be positive, OK? I am trying to be positive, Mick. But I'm scared. I know, babe. Soon all this mess will be over with. And then uh, we can get away. A nice little holiday, just you, me and the kids. Oh, yeah. I'd like to get away today. So I'm going to cope without Jimmy and Lindsay. Hey, you'll manage. And I'll take over once I finish next door at Barbuki. And who knows, with a bit of luck, Jimmy might be here by then. Yeah. So I'll see you later, yeah? Yeah, see ya. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. William James Corkill, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hiya. What's wrong? Nothing. Just I dashed home from work to spend a bit of time with you. And all the farmers are not saying you've gone to your mates for the afternoon. Sorry. I just nip next off Katie's for a coffee. Why? Haven't we got any here, like? No. You know what I mean. I went round for a chat. <sighs> we had a bit of a fallout the other day and I wanted to make up with her. Besides, there's nothing to do with you. How was work? Was the money in? The usual. <sighs> Rachel, do you mind? I've just spent the last hour ironing them. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you sit down. I can do that. You've been working all morning. No, no, you stay where you are, Rach. This is the last shirt. Or oh, didn't you notice? There's no need for you to do that. I would have done it. When? When? You're at work all night. I mean, none of me clothes are ironed, but you just rush off to your mates for the afternoon. Oh, but I forgot. There's nothing to do here. Here's the Rachel. Get yourself a little bit too, love. I don't believe it. What? This is it. The letter from the college. Well, open it then. Oh, no, look at that. What if it's a knockback? Well, there's only one way to find out. Senor Nifosek. Oh, good. Come here. College. Dear Mr. Corkill, we are writing to inform you that your application for the PGCE course has been a success. Oh, no, 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 no,
Yes, 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 Christian. Yes, 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 Daddy? Hey, 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 stop moaning. It took me ages to do that. Yeah, get that down your neck. I have got more important things to worry about than a few butties, kid. I am going to be a teacher. <laughs> what are you doing, Rach? Just thought I'd make some cushion covers. Then loads of old material. Just like brighten the flat up a bit. Didn't know you could do anything like that. My mum taught me and I bet how to make things when we were little. She used to make loads, curtains, bedding, even our clothes. She used to say it'd be cheaper to make than to buy. She's right, these would have cost me a fortune if I bought them in town. Economising, eh? I'm impressed. You start to sound like a proper wife. That's well, because I am a proper wife. Listen, I'm sorry about having a go with you before like that. It's just, you know, when I come home from work and I'm tired and that, but I know that's no excuse. You had every right to be cross. I should have been doing the ironing, not running around gossiping. I've just got to try and remember that I'm not single anymore. Do you wish you were? Oh, don't be daft. I love being married to you. Oh, I'm sorry. You've already said that. It's not you who should be sorry anyway, it's me. I know. Let's do something special. Let's go out for a meal tonight, eh? Oh, I'd love to, but I can't. I'm on a late shift. Oh, I forgot. Well, how about tomorrow night? Where's the work rotor? Oh, it's on top of the telly. Let's have a look. Oh, this is stupid. We haven't got a night off together till next Thursday. Maybe I should give my job up. I think we could cope, if that's what you want to really do. Do you think? I mean, we've hardly got any money as it is. Oh, well, it's hardly the highest paid job of the century, is it? I think we could easily manage. I'm glad you came. I didn't think you would. Why not? But it's not the most enticing offer you've ever had. <laughs> Spending the morning listening to me mum and dad bicker, followed by a few butties at the Corkills. <laughs> well, it's not every day I get the chance to spend a whole day with you, is it? Well worth the sacrifice. Well, if you put it like that. Are oh, you a bit cramped in here? Six of you in the one house. Well, it's not ideal, like, but I nah, keep myself to myself, you know. Would you rather have a place of your own? Well, I will do eventually, Julia, when I get sorted out and that. Do you know what? I've had four Ansanis and I'm still hungry. <laughs> when you think that I made the effort? Oh, I know, yeah. Jimmy told me there was going to be all kinds of food here today, so I never bothered eating this morning. <laughs> Neither did I. I spent half the morning fiddling with my freezer. It keeps trying to defrost itself. Wait, you couldn't look at it for me, could you? What's the day? Well, I don't want to ruin my perishables. I tell you what, if you sort it out for me, I'll treat you to a chippy dinner. You twisted me arm, Julia. Ah, Tarlow. We'll call back at Mick's place on our way home. You going to work, Dad? Thought you weren't going in? I'm not supposed to be, but I promised Mick John out this morning, didn't I? He's asked me to help him out. I thought we'd be back earlier than this. Oh, well, you'd better get round there before he gives your hours to someone else. Well, the way he looked this morning, I think he was desperate. He looked like he could use all the help he can get. Oh, my! Oh, <laughs> I've got so much to tell you. Come and sit down. Right. So, oh, what did they say? Oh, it was unbelievable. They really know what they're doing. Everything seems to be so thorough, not a stone left unturned. First they go through your menstrual history, your gynaecological history, contraception, previous pregnancies, everything. Oh, really? And? Well, and then they go through your medical history, any operations you may have had, uh, any medicines that may have been on for any length of time, whether it was heavy smoker or not. Oh, and what did they say about you? The consultant was really understanding. None of this, you haven't been trying long enough for it to be considered a problem nonsense. He gave me a physical examination, then sent me for an ultrasound and an X-ray, and he's even talking about a plan of action. And what is this plan? He's booked me into the hospital next week for something they call a laparoscopy. Oh, uh, yeah, a lapar... Uh, well, what, what's that? Oh, it's nothing, really. It's a minor operation. They make a small incision here just to check that everything's as it should be. Darn. 
<laughs> that was wonderful news. And did they say anything about uh, when they want to see me? Well, uh, once I've been given the all clear, there may be one or two little tests you have to go in for. But don't worry, darling. It's miles down the line. For the moment, I think we should concentrate on making sure that I'm in perfect health. Here we go. Hi, how's it going? Oh, I've been run off my feet. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. <sighs> You're all right. You're right, it kept me occupied. I've had no time to worry. See, I told you feel better being out the house. Anyway, we can get off now if you want. I'll finish my shift next door. Nah, you're all right. I think I'll stay here. Got used to it now. Don't fancy going back home. Fine. We'll have a full house. Jimmy will be here soon. Ah, oh, speak of the devil. Hi, boss. Told you I wouldn't let you down. Hey, thanks, Jimmy. So, how the christening? Great, yeah. All done. Sorted. Our William's christened. So at least Jackie will be happy, eh? William, eh? So she wouldn't let you go with Billy? Hey, listen, I'm glad you're here. Got a bit of good news for you. I've only been accepted for the PGCE course. What's that one? It's at all. My teacher training. Postgraduate certificates in education. Gonna be a teacher, me. Jimmy Corkle. Who'd have believed that, eh? Well done, Jimmy. Da. Teacher, eh, Jimmy? <laughs> nice one, boss. But, uh, postgrad. Doesn't that mean you've got a degree already? How have you managed that? Hiya, Rach. I wasn't expecting you until later. Yeah, no, um, I've got something to tell you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've made a decision. I'm gonna pack my job in. Why? What are you gonna be doing? I didn't even know you'd been applying for other jobs. Well, I haven't. I've just decided that I've had enough. What? You haven't got another job to go to? Well, I thought you and Christine were supposed to be skint. How can you afford to survive on one wage? Well, manage. It's not as though this is the highest paid job of the century, is it? And there is more important things than making money, you know. Oh, like what, for instance? Oh, you're not pregnant, are you? No, I'm not. Anyway, what if I was? I am married now, you know. Oh, Rachel, I think you're being stupid. You've been desperate to get a job for ages. You can't just give it up. Yes, I can. It's affecting my marriage. We never see each other through no fault of our own. Rachel, just think about it. <laughs> oh, we have a laugh in here. I mean, in case you hardly see it as it is. I'm sorry, I've made my mind up. I'm leaving. I'll work a week's notice. It's OK. Hello, Rich. What's up with her, God? I don't believe it, Dad. She's just quit. Ah, she's married now, isn't she? Maybe she fancies being a kept woman. Oh, if that Christian had his way, she'd be kept all right. Yeah. Kept away from her mates. She hasn't half changed since she married him. You can hardly recognise her. Make that fish, chips and peas. And no half portions either, Jimmy Corkill. My stomach thinks my throat's been cut. Yeah, I know. And mine is a sausage dinner. Tell you what, you know, if that christening had been at mix, we'd have had a big pan of rice and peas with chicken dumplings that works, wouldn't we, lads? Oh, my stomach was rumbling all the way through that service. And all we got was a bevy and a few lousy bussies. Do you mind? Don't be cheeky. You ain't invited to fill your faces. Hey, he was only following orders, you know. I mean, we told him to starve you, so he'd come in here and spend your money. Oh, uh, so you got the staff on commission, have you? Well, something like that. Hey. You were invited to witness a momentous what's it occasion. And you nearly made a cock up of that, Jimmy Corkill. Not even knowing what you're going to call the poor child. Oh, sounds like you had a buzz. Hey, I thought you'd be standing there like Lady Walk, you know. And if you're not going home, then throw a couple of fish in that butter. I have been run off my feet all day, and I'm not doing another thing. Hmm. What's up? Oh, Meg. That's the policeman who interviewed me. Go on, love. We're being seen to. They do a lovely state you kidney. Not now, Julia. Please. Mr. Michael Johnson and Mrs. Elaine Johnson, I'm investigating the death of Mrs. Gladys Charlton. I'm arresting you both on suspicion of the murder of Mrs. Gladys Charlton. Murder? Oh, God. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I must ask you to come with me to the police station. Sin, 
Don't worry about anything, Mick. I'll sort it out. After the break, it's rough going when Thanksgiving and football collide midfield. going to school. What? Oh, come on. I promised you, Dad. We you don't know. want to. Why not? What's up, Leo? You'll only get abuse all day. Oh, well, sticks and stones can break your bones, but names won't hurt, eh? Hey? What's gonna happen to us? What if me dad and Elena are kept in prison? They won't be. With a bit of luck, they'll be on for the tea. So they haven't been charged with murder, then? Well, yeah, they have. But, I mean, they're not gonna be tried today, are they? I mean, the trial's not gonna be for ages, if ever. So come on, school now. Come on, you're gonna have to go. I'm not getting the blame for you lot skiving off. You promise I'll see you dad again? Cross me heart. Tanya? I'm coming to court with you. Tanya? Let me come with you. Please. I've got to see me mum. I'm scared, Simbad. All right, you win. But I promise it'll be okay. You wait and see. Do you know, Junior, I'm actually looking forward to going into hospital. Private room. One of the top consultants in the north of England. And hopefully... Peace of mind. Well, if you pay good money for it, love, you might as well try and enjoy it. <laughs> What's it called again, what they're going to do to you? You know, all that rummaging about, I mean. <laughs> it's a laparoscopy, Julia, and it's very high-tech rummaging. It's all done with computers and tiny cameras. Oh, well, the miracles of modern science, eh? Come on, Max. He's driving me in. Let's sort out a mini-crisis at the restaurant first. By the way, why are you carrying those bin liners around? I've got our own, you know. Oh, it's for the over 55s clothing collection for all the poor starving children in Africa. What sort of stuff are you after? Oh, don't you think you can manage, love? Well, it's something out. Mind you, you can get a bit hot in Africa, so no fair coats or nothing like that. Something nice and light and summery. You know, something nice and bright. <laughs> God bless us and save us. Flaming hooligans! It's Max, actually, Julia. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you better get going then. Yeah, I'll put these couple of bags on the bed for you. Well, I'll sort something out as soon as I can, but Max and I are going to be rather busy for a while. As soon as we're sure there's nothing wrong with me, we're going to be concentrating on making babies. Oh. And this time, we will succeed. Of course you will, love. Of course you will. Julie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's been 
been happening this time? Don't ask me. Oh, they do have been caught today, you know. Oh, I hope they get bail. I dread to think what will happen to those poor children, those parents that left behind bad. I know, it's terrible. I just popped in to see how Simba's trooping with the kids. Oh, yeah. I heard that you two were quite friendly. Friendly? Oh, no. Between ourselves, Mrs. Brogan, we're lovers. I'm mad about the man. Aren't I, love? Nice weather for today. Who needs local radio, eh? Yeah, I know, the Manor Park mouth. Yeah, the busies upstairs, Tanya's looking after them. Do they want? Documents, they said. They've got a search warrant, so what can you do? Well, shouldn't Tanya be in school? Yeah, I know. Oh, God, I hope Mick and Elaine get bail. I don't think I could face another morning like this. I know, yeah. Typical man. OK, thanks. Bye now. Cheers. They took all my nan's papers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right, love. Yeah. I'll make a start on the washing up. OK, Tam. She's coming to court with me. I couldn't say no, could I? Of course not. When are you going? In about an hour. God, I'm knackered. Sim, have you thought about what'll happen if Mick and Elaine don't get bail? No, 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 keep the colours the same. Hi, you, Dave. I'm after a nice box of chocolates. Oh, yes, of course, Timothy. Fetch a few over, will you, so Mrs Brogan can choose one. What? Now? I thought you wanted me to do this. Go on, quick as you like. Hey. And I don't want any of that cheap rubbish that for Susanna Farnham when she comes out of the hospital. You old bat. Oh, not very pleasant to have any bits poked about with, is it, Dave? Quite. Oh, no, they won't do a lot. Perhaps Mrs. Brogan yeah. would prefer one of the boxes from the new delivery out of the back. Wait, this job. The face on him. I don't envy you keeping that one in line. <laughs> Yes, I know he can be a bit of a handful, but I did promise Sinbad that I'd take him under my wing, and as a matter of fact, he's responding very well to a touch of good old-fashioned discipline. Oh, well, I don't expect he's ever had any discipline before with a mother like he's got. Can't, more. Mm, I bumped into her earlier. She seems to be more interested in keeping a fancy man happy than paying any attention to her family. Oh, you've certainly got your work cut out taking on any son of theirs, believe me. Hiya. Dad? Mike? He's not here, Jack. What's up? Not here? So did you do this, then? Don't look at me. I don't open other people's mail. So it was me, Dad? Yeah. Well, where is he? He's out. Where? I don't know, do I? I'm just a humble wage slave here, remember? I don't know what I do about him. He's driving me mad. Oh. What if Mick and Aline don't get bail today? And your court's gonna let three kids look after themselves. I know. I suppose I'll look after them. What? For weeks or even months, maybe? Till the trial? Look, what if the court say they'd be better off in care? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. But would you be able to cope with cooking the meals, washing, shopping, and running your own business? I mean, you've got to be more realistic. Look how tired you are now after one day. Well, they'll get bail. It's Mick and Elaine, isn't it? It's not as if they're the Wests or someone. And fingers crossed that they do. But you've got to face facts. We're having enough problems finding time alone as it is. Please, don't get me wrong, love. But don't you think it's about time we started making some plans? I mean, you can't just drift through life, you know, waiting to see what happens. So you're worrying about us? Well, yeah. I think we should talk about it. Where life is into all this. Look, Carmel, every time I have made plans, it's always gone wrong. I've never had anything that's lasted. It's a sort of joke around here, only it's not funny. I've had a few women, and a couple of them that I've loved. All I managed to salvage from it was little Ruth. And I only see her once every blue moon. I mean, what's the point in making plans when I know everything's going to go wrong? But if you don't take that risk, well, then the person who's wife for you is just going to slip through your fingers. 
All I'm asking is to think about what you want from your future. And then let me know if you want me to be part of it. Timothy. Do you know what a very wise man said to me once? It was way back in my army days. I was doing my basic training and I was told to wash the parade ground. Yes, wash it, would you believe? And of course I didn't want to do it. I thought it was beneath me. And my sergeant major caught me sitting down on the job. And I thought I was done for. I thought he put me on a charge at least. But you know what he said? All he said was, Crosby, always remember, if a job is worth doing, it is worth doing well. And I've always tried to make that my motto. And I think it's a good idea if you try and make that yours. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, when you've done that properly, give the car wash a spit and polish for me, will you? There's a good lad. nagging you all the time, you know. Yeah, I know. It's just that, well, I think in our time of life, we should make the most of a good chance when it comes our way. So that's what I am, am I? The best of a bad bunch? You know what I mean. But why all this now? I mean, why can't we carry on the way we are doing? Well, we hardly ever see one another. Something always gets in the way. If we don't sort something out soon, we're going to end up drifting apart. All right. Well, what do you suggest then, Oprah? Move in with me. God, I knew I shouldn't have said anything. No, no, it's all right. I it's... don't want to push you into anything you don't want to do. Carmel, it's all right. I just thought... If you're me... worried about Tim, don't. He's 16 years old. He's got a proper job. I think even he knows it's time he grew up. And I really think he's starting to settle down now. Carmel, I'm not worried about Tim. It's just that... Well, I can't commit myself until I know Mick and Elaine have got bail. So you're not against the idea in principle? I mean, if everything works out OK... You'll move in with me. Look, I've told you. I'm hopeless with women. I've got a terrible track record. And I'm generally a bad bet. So don't say you weren't warned. I'll take that as a yet, then. I'll be in touch. Come on, suckers, make my day. I guess. Tanya's just told me they've been arrested. Yeah, I know. I thought they'd just be questioned. I never thought it'd come to this. Well, Cassie, it was bound to happen. I mean, if you get accused of murder and you don't deny it, well, you're bound to get arrested, aren't you? I'll be ready in a minute. We'd better go soon. Ready for what? My mum and Mick are in court this morning. Tanya, please. I am so sorry about all of this. Bit late for that, isn't it? Oh, God, what have I done? <sighs> what matters now is that they get bail. Can I come to court with you? Uh, yeah, OK, if you want to. Want to? Elaine is my sister. She will never forgive me for this. What if they keep them in prison? What about Tanya? Leo and Gemma. Oh, God. Do you think they will get bail? I don't know, Cass. I hope so, but I just don't know. Thank you. There. Yeah. Home from home. How are you feeling? Confident. Very confident. Aren't you? Um, yes, yes I am, but it's not me having the test, is it? Oh, I don't mind. It's all in a good cause and it shouldn't be painful, so oh, just think, Max. A year from now and we could have our new baby. <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time, eh? <laughs> it's all right, Max, you can go. I'll be fine here, relaxing, imagining the future. Which will be happy, I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm.
Mike? Yeah? Where's Rachel? Is she doing the late shift? No, no, she's off sick. Christine just rang in. Oh, Grace, that's all I need. What are all these boxes? Oh, it's just crisps and stuff. Oh, and uh, there's two more kegs to come in. Kegs of what? Yeah. I'll just be a mild. Oh, no, no way. Nobody under 95 drinks stuff like that. Well, my dad does. Look, you can forget about these kegs. We don't want them. And the same goes for this lot. Boxes of crisps. This is meant to be a cafe bar. Well, my dad thought it might do well. Look, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take it all back, the lot of it. And, mate, in future, any order not made by me is not an order, OK? Jack, I can't stop your dad from ordering things. He is your partner, you know. Yeah, where's luck? Hey, hang on a minute, Jack. You know what you sound like? You sound like a spoiled little cow. Your dad has just risked every penny he had to help you. He's cashed in his insurance policies, his pension, he's remortgaged the house. Everything he could lay his hands on for you. And all you can do is complain. Yeah, but I never asked him to do all of that. Yeah, well, just what might have happened if he hadn't the board JC out? He could have had anyone in here. Could have ruined the place being a real nightmare. Yeah, all right, mate, you've made your point. But pork scratchings. Yeah, all right, but you're going to have to talk to him about that. Well, less of the morning, all right. Hello, Elaine. You OK? Oh. Elaine. Oh. You OK, babe? I needed to speak to Tandy, but they wouldn't let me phone. Please, both of you, come sit down. We haven't got long. Now, today is just a formal remand hearing. You won't have to say anything. The real issue is whether we can get bail for you or not, OK? What will happen to the kids if they do keep us in? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. As a precaution, I've asked your friend Mr Sweeney to bring both your passports along to the court in case the magistrates make surrendering them a condition of bail. I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Now, I must go. I'll see you both in court shortly. And don't worry. Oh, doesn't he look cute? <laughs> <laughs> look, Sam, do you want some petrol or what? Why? Are you going to get your pump out, are you? Ooh, big boy, what a whopper. with those hooligans. Were they friends of yours? Well, were they? I'm asking you a question. Right, that's it. I'm giving you a verbal warning. I thought we understood each other. Obviously, I'm wrong. Any further incidents and you are out. Do you understand? Now, you get this place cleaned up right away. in the Crown Court last week, you know, for young Jackie Dixon's case against that nasty piece of work, Leon Powell. Practically got away with murder, that one. Elaine Johnson, Michael Johnson. Elaine and Michael Johnson, you were each charged that on the first day of July 1997, you murdered Gladys Charlton. Do you each understand the charge? Yes. Could the defendants be seated while your worships hear representation about them? Uh. Excuse me, Your Worships. I thought you said there wouldn't be a problem. What's he going to be saying about us? I'm afraid he's going to object to bail. I'm sorry, Mick, I didn't anticipate we'd get the prosecutor from hell. But it's not his decision, it's the magistrates. And we've got a good case. It'll be all right. I apologise, Your Worships. Hey, 
bitch. Are you all right? Well, Mike said you weren't well. Oh, have you been sick? No, not yet. I just feel a bit weak, that's all. Oh, on your last week in work as well, eh? And what's that supposed to mean? Well, it is a bit convenient, isn't it? Off sick when you're meant to be working your week's notice. Hang on, I had every intention of coming in. It was Christian who said I shouldn't. He said I looked terrible this morning. Oh, I see. And did you feel ill before Christian said you were ill? Yeah, of course I did. Look, Rach, I'm not being funny or anything, but... Well, it's like you won't listen to anyone but Christian these days. You are? Honestly, Rach, me and Casey are really worried about you. Giving up your job, never coming out, spending every day cleaning this place top to bottom. It's like you're cutting yourself off from everybody except him. Do you think it's about time you did something for you for a change? Your Worships, I do apply for bail on behalf of Mr and Mrs Johnson. You have heard the facts of this tragic case, and I submit that Mr and Mrs Johnson acted with the best intentions. I would submit that bail is appropriate in this case. Mr and Mrs Johnson are a threat to no one. Neither are they likely to abscond. Added to which, neither Mr nor Mrs Johnson have any previous record. They are not violent criminals but two people who care deeply for their family. Mr and Mrs Johnson live with their three children. If they were to be kept in custody, those children would need to be taken into care. Just keep your fingers crossed, eh? It'll be OK. I'm keeping everything crossed. My clients are prepared to abide by whatever conditions the court may impose. I would ask thee so that they may return to where they belong, to their family. Here, here. Thank you, Your Worships. Do you think she said you know? Yeah. Got them crossed? Good girl. I know it's hard for you and Katie to understand. But when you're married, it's like... I don't know. It's like everything changes. Only if you let it. No, it does change. You have to consider someone else apart from yourself. Yeah, OK, I'll give you that. But you don't have to become some kind of doormat. Doormat? You haven't got a clue, have you? What do you mean? What me and Christian have got is the best thing in the world. It's like, whatever I do wrong, I know he'll always be here waiting for me. It makes me feel dead secure, like being a little kid again. And me cooking a few meals and doing a bit of dusting is nothing in return for what he does for me. We were just worried about your age, that's all. Yeah, well, there's no need to be honest. I'm fine, OK? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> Did you get our passports to Eleanor? Yeah, yeah, everything sorts out, no sweat. Oh, cheers, sir. You're welcome. Oh, congratulations, yeah. Smith. I, uh... Oh, I knew it would be all right. We had everything crossed for you. Hey, thanks, Julia. <laughs> Phew. Hey, thanks, Eleanor. You were brilliant. Just doing my job. <sighs> oh, I can't believe it. I'm so relieved. Oh, Lord. So, what happens now? You'll inch your way slowly through our wonderful legal system. It really could be months before you get a date for the hearing. But it's good news, isn't it? I mean, them letting us have bail. The case against us can't be that strong. Well, I'm afraid there's a hell of a long way to go before you're free yet. And it's only going to get harder for you from here on in. Granted, you've won a small but important battle. But I'm afraid there's a hell of a long way to go before you win the war. As real life drama next on four as difficult decisions are made on the island of dreams.